This video is intended to demonstrate how an animus communicator may be used to interface a serial DF1 device. Our hardware setup consists of an Allen Bradley SLC 500 PLC in DF1 half duplex slave mode. The PLC is connected through channel 0 with a serial RS232 cable to an animus communicator gateway in DF1 master mode. On the field bus side, the gateway is connected to an Ethernet network. And on the Ethernet, we also have an Allen Bradley Control Logics 5561 automation controller. Our focus will be on how the communicator is configured using ABC config tool. Details on how to configure and program the PLC controllers are outside the scope of this video and intentionally left out. Using RS Logix 500 from Rockwell Automation, we have configured the SLC 500 to have one integer data file, number 110, with two elements. Currently, the PLC is running a simple ladder program that reads data from an input module to the first element and writes data from the second element to an output module. On the input module we have a set of 16 manual switches and on the output module we have a set of 16 LEDs. The SLC 500 communication settings for channel 0 is DF1 half duplex using slave address 1. The bitrate is 19200, we use no parity bit, one stop bit and cyclic redundancy check for error detecting. To the Control Logix Automation Controller, using RS Logix 5000, we have added the communicator as a generic Ethernet module. Basically, there are only five things that need to be set. The data type, the communicator IP address, the connection point and size of data to read, for the communicator always 100, and we use size 1. The connection point and size of data to write, for the communicator always 150, and we use size 1. The connection point for configuration data, any non-zero value with size 0. We have set the requested packet interval to 10 milliseconds. The automation controller is currently running a short ladder program that consumes data from the field bus inverts it, and then produces the result back on the field bus. To configure the communicator, we use ABC config tool with an empty configuration. First of all, we select the ABC entry and set the protocol mode property to DF1. This option makes the communicator operate as DF1 master on the subnet in half duplex mode. This is currently the only available mode if we intend to use the communicator as gateway for DF1 devices. Next, we select the field bus entry and set the field bus type property to Ethernet IP. By doing this, some network configuration options appear, such as the communicator IP address and default gateway to use. Dynamic assignment of address is also possible by disabling the TCP IP settings. We select the subnet entry to set the desired communication settings for the subnet. The baud rate is set to 19200 bits per second. We use 8 data bits, no parity bit. RS-232 as physical standard, and one stop bit. The F1 address is set to zero. And the two poll time settings for active and inactive slaves will live with their default values. The subnet will only have one slave node, the SLC-500.
Recall that SLC was configured for cyclic redundancy check error detection and slave address 1. For the node, the communicator also need to know the PLC type of the slave. We set this to SLC 500. Now we will add two services. One for reading data and one for writing data. By right-clicking our SLC node and select Add Command, we can see a list with DF1 services supported by the communicator. We first add the read data service. The element number to read is 0. File number is 110. And file type is integer. There are only one integer element of size 2 bytes that will be read, so the data length is 2 bytes. The memory offset we set to 0. That address is in the memory area used for input to the field bus. We leave the update mode as cyclic but lower the update time to 10 milliseconds to reduce latency. Then we add the write data service. The element number for writing data to is 1. File number will be 110. The file type is still integer. We write only one element, so the data length will still be 2 bytes. The offset we set to hexadecimal 200. That address is in the memory area used for output from the field bus. We use cyclic update mode and lower the update time to 10 milliseconds here as well. If we intend to save this configuration to file, this is a good time for doing that. With this done, we need to connect to the communicator and download this configuration. Both the SLC 500 and the Control Logix Automation Controller are already up and running. So, as soon as the communicator has taken the new configuration into effect, the following should happen. Data will be exchanged cyclically between the communicator and the SLC. It will also be exchanged cyclically between the control logics and the communicator. Besides that, the control logics ladder program will cause the 16 input bits to be inverted before they are moved to the output bits. This way, data will propagate up from the SLC input module switches through the gateway to the control logics automation controller, get inverted and propagate back down again to finally show up inverted on the SLC 500 output module LEDs. The result may look something like this. Keep an eye on the output module LEDs and see that the input pattern gets inverted. Everything seemed to work and I have nothing left to show.